<laughs> Those have been sitting out there for like a good week. <laughs> it's like, I'm not touching them. It's dog food. It's uh, like the subscribe and save thing from Amazon. Uh, I think it's safe to go ahead and pop those open at this point. Also, I mean, I have wipes. I'm just being dramatic and silly here. But um, look, starting a vlog at nighttime. What's the point of that? Can't do any yard work right now. That's because the first updates to give. Uh, it got real cold, so palm trees are back inside. Mm, they look better, but I think they'll be okay. But I'm not liking the color of the foliage. They can go back out in a couple days. It's going to warm up and... They should bounce back just fine. We have to do a great start here, right? Wanna see something real gross? It's the next day, by the way. Because why did I start the vlog at nighttime? That didn't make any sense. Also, I'm in my laundry room. Expect some parrots screaming. Anyways, this is my washing machine, which looks way dirtier and on the camera than it does in person. I guess I'll clean that. Hasn't been draining well, so I need to clean this. I hate doing this, it's so gross. I don't know why I brought you along for it. Not a lot of stuff going on right now, so figure why not? But this is, that's that's not gonna work. What's going on here? Well, it actually isn't that dirty, but there was a uh, gum wrapper and a rock in there. So uh, that's what the problem was. I pulled this out and water just started ugh, everywhere, which I feel like is probably dangerous. Wouldn't you agree? Maybe I was supposed to unplug this first. I don't know. Never have done that before, but it's also never gushed water before. So I wouldn't have known to do that. Look, that's nice. I did something. Welcome to my plant channel where I'm fixing my washing machine. It's a vlog. I don't know what else to say. Things are weird right now. Birds are screaming. It's like, whew, take a deep breath. Don't let the screaming get to you. Yeah, um, it wasn't clogged with hair, so that's nice. It, there's a little gum wrapper. Did I already tell you? I think I did. But uh, there was a lot of foul water in the line, so I'm doing the, you know, the machine cleaner thingy because, like I said, it was nasty. Oh, what you do? You were being so cute, now you gotta go? Oh, what's the, hey, what's up, garden friends? If your tropical plant party, how's everybody doing? Hope you're good, I'm great. I totally forgot to do the intro, my bad. Need to turn on the lights by hitting on, not off. I already threw that, didn't do that right. Uh, it's kind of loud in here. I was gonna do some stuff, but I need to refill. I did some watering last night, well, yesterday afternoon, really. I got a pump set up in here with a hose on it, which is how I typically water out of this, but I didn't use this for watering as much this year as I have in years past. I've developed a very bad habit of not breathing while I'm talking in the vlogs. I need to work on that and also not holding the mic like right up to my face. You can hear every breath I take. That is probably annoying to you and really annoying to me when I'm editing. But anyway, so I have it set up on a remote so that I can turn the pump on. Is it working? Yes. Okay. Pump's working. This pump, I'm gonna turn that off. It'll start spinning the fish around. This pump, I don't buy like expensive pond pumps. I haven't ever found them to work better than just the super cheap ones from Amazon. That's with some exceptions, of course, but for the most part, these little guys that don't have a name, but that's what it looks like, those have held up wonderfully. But this one in particular, starting, I don't know, like a month ago, sometimes I have to take it apart and give the impeller a few spins and put it back together, which is sort of annoying. And that's why I put it on a remote control so I'm not constantly unplugging it and plugging it back in. This, it's, there's no point to this or any of this. We just vlog in. I'm gonna just say that it, I have no direction for this vlog this week, just like last week. Still kind of in a waiting place. Um, this mangrove planter, not working out. I think that's partially because when the water level dropped, just started filling with water. The mangrove is still alive, but I'm gonna need to do something else with that and then get this refilled, which takes a long time, so that's not gonna be part of the vlog. But one of the reasons I was using the pond water to water, uh, I used to always only use the pond water to water the plants, but this year I tried to use more tap instead of the pond water because I thought it might help with the pests a little bit. And I do think that it did a little bit, probably not very much, but there's really nice pressure that comes out of this pump and this hose and I need to harden off the alocasias back here because they're starting to, you can kind of see, they got a little bit floppy. 
because my circulation fan that's up here all the way right there, the oscillation stopped working because nobody makes a good wall mount fan that actually maintains its oscillation. This is the third one I've tried and they only seem to last for like a m maybe four months, five months. I, the first one I had lasted two years and it was fantastic. And then when I went to return it and talk to the manufacturers and whatnot, they said that it was weird. They couldn't believe it lasted two years. And I was like, there's a great selling point for your product. I've been trying other ones, but I think I'm gonna go back to, the, that's neither here nor there. I don't need to worry about that this year. The point though, is that without that fan moving back and forth, it's not moving the foliage around like it's supposed to. The whole point of that, I've when I did the video about moving the plants outside, is having something that keeps the foliage moving a little bit, not constantly, but at least, you know, an hour or so a day, not blasting directly on it, but just like I said, a little bit of movement helps keeps the plant nice and strong and sturdy and just better prepared to go outside so that when they go outside, they don't go into total shock. Back to the alacages back here. So uh, they had like three weeks of not having any airflow back there. And there isn't typically a ton of airflow back in that direction anyways. You can see I need to clean some dead foliage up. But so when I watered, I decided to use the stronger pressure so that I could give the foliage some nice movement a little bit more easily. Now I've pulled the plastic down from the back wall of the grow room so I can just walk by it every day and kind of just like walk by it and I just sort of like give the foliage a little tickle with my hand. That's helpful. Either way, when I move these out, they're probably still gonna flop their foliage off. They usually do like within an hour of taking them outside. They're just very delicate and annoying in that sense, but they are they grow so fast that I'm usually just like, whatever, in a couple weeks, they're flushed back out with growth. So it's not <laughs> really that big of a deal. I just knocked my Talanzia ball around. So there's a grow room update. Needs water, using the pond water, which the plants appreciate. I have used it like probably once a month, but I'll just use a watering can and dip it in and do a light drink with it after I've already watered, like the day after I've watered, just because it's nice nutrient rich water. But in, I just haven't been like flooding the plants with it like I was in the past. So that's what's going on there. No other up, like it's just the waiting game. If there's a frost advisory for tonight, they're saying it might get down to 31. Ugh. This has been the longest winter. I know it's spring, but April, with the exception of two days last week, has just been obnoxious. Colder than March. March was nice. I suppose since the plastic's down, I can actually talk about these from over here. I, mean, I pretty much just said everything I need to say about them though. You can see the older growth on them that really wasn't into the pressure from the water and the movement. The newer growth though, not so bad. Like this is pretty much what I do. I just walk by them and I very gently and just like, okay guys, go ahead and dance around a little bit. And uh, just been doing that a couple times a day. The alacages have done well out here this winter. The growth is smaller than in years past, but it's much taller, partially because it's reaching. I put a different light up here this year and it's not quite as intense, but that's because the light that I used to have up here was too much for these pothos. And there's really no other place for me to put the hanging plants like the bromeliads and the pothos and whatnot. So there's, apparently we're doing a houseplant update, which is fine. You can maybe see on here all those little white specks. So yeah, the mealybugs are still a problem, but it has improved somewhat with the routine spraying, but um, I'm out of the spray and I'm not going to Home Depot to buy it. And it's like $30 a bottle on Amazon. So I will be putting together like just a, a homemade peppermint oil spray with a little bit of soap in it and uh, first making sure to hit them down with rubbing alcohol first. So it's, I wouldn't say under control, but it's better than it's been in the past. And I think I talked about this last week with the Edenidia palms. Once I pull the plants outside, just being outdoors in nature with the better airflow and the birds and wildlife and whatnot, usually the mealybug issue tends to kind of resolve itself. But I will still be giving these a heavy blast. Anyways, like I said, the alacages are doing okay. Look how big these trunks are. Getting some nice big trunks on them. These will put out larger foliage when they get outside and into the ground. That will make a really big difference too. For winter, I just store them like this. I could just store them dormant. I did that with a couple of them this year and we'll see how they're doing. I did that over here with this other alocasia. 
stored it dormant. I threw it in a pot about, I'd say, two and a half weeks ago, and it started to put up some new growth here. I'm going to try and get a little bit closer to it so you can see it. This is one from last year that it was in a lot of videos, and each video I was like, what's it called? Then people would tell me, and then I would forget. And back to that place. It has really pretty purpley undertones on the foliage and a nice glossy outside. You can see that was one of the first leaves it put out so it's got a little bit of damage on it but each one that comes up is a little bit better the corm down there is nice and sturdy the foliage is nice and sturdy so i'm not really too worried about it one thing i did notice is that my adansoni is growing very well it's all the way over here to the back side of this wall and it is like you can kind of see where it comes through here and it's i have it the pot that it's in is all the way back over by the areca palm so it's grown all the way from over there and come around and back over to this side. So it's very happy with these conditions. And uh, everything else is just kind of like, ugh, hanging on, ready to get outside, just like me. I just want to go outside. There are a few things I can do outdoors today, but, um, oh, is this Dracania is not getting eaten by that Adansoni, is it? It kind of is. Okay, well, I'll need to do something about that. This is, okay, that's DE powder. That's good. I was worried those were mealybugs. They're all going to keep getting their treatments and whatnot to help hold off the mealybugs. But there are a few little things I can do outside. It's kind of chilly, but that's all right. It'll still be nice to be outdoors. Oh, yeah. I need to put salt in the pool, too. I have all this salt sitting here. I need to, that's not very entertaining. I'm not going to bore you guys with putting salt in the pool. We finally had a good amount of rain, but it wasn't, like, there's been rain in our forecast, but it keeps missing, like, my area just kind of keeps going around it. So I've actually had to spend a lot of time out here watering for April. But uh, the, look at what happened. It washed the soil out from this berm down in here. I was a little bit concerned about that happening when I planted these. I intentionally planted the laurels up a little bit higher just because I was concerned about there being potential for rot and whatnot. And if like there's like an inch, maybe two, exposed of the root ball like that can be okay but you want to mulch around it ideally that's you don't want to do that though i should clarify that that's only if you're working with like really damp soils that aren't draining very well and this berm has been pretty well amended over the years but it was created from just clay just clay that doesn't drain so but it's also a berm right and those tend to drain a little bit faster because they're raised up and exposed anyways that's not the whole point is that it all washed out so i'm thinking i don't know how i'm going to do this i won't be able to do it right now for now i'll just grab a rake and pull the mulch up around the root mass so that those aren't exposed like that but i'm thinking what i may have to do for a more permanent solution is to like get some little pieces of flagstone or some type of just flat stone and put those up a little bit around the bases of each of these and get that filled in just to help retain things in or i could go ahead and pack the soil back in and um, peg in some chicken wire or hardware cloth that would help with the erosion control in that area i don't think i want to pull them up and redig the holes i mean i guess i could but they've i feel like that would be a bit of a setback wouldn't it maybe not i don't know let me know what you guys think down below since they've only been in the, they haven't even been in the ground for a full year i don't think that that would be a horrible thing to do because it's not like they've rooted out and established themselves yet anyways you know that's about you know a two to three year process with shrubs especially laurels they're not the fastest growing things depending on where you live uh, in colder climates with hot hot summers the at least with the skip laurels and the cherry laurels they don't tend to grow really really fast whereas up in like the pacific northwest these would like just take over and create a great big massive privacy wall in no time I don't really have that down here. So that's what's going on with that stuff. A little bit of an update, I suppose, since the garden tour that was a few days ago. And uh, I don't think that much else has changed. I need to do some pruning though. Yeah, remember if you saw the garden tour, I was talking about this area here. I really need to get this honeysuckle vine cut out of this hydrangea tree. Get that hydrangea tree cut back. I probably should have gotten the hydrangea tree cut back like maybe two weeks ago. But it's still at a point in its growth where it's safe to do it. I think the leaves are like just starting to flush out. You want to do it right before they flush out. Oh, it might help if you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see all the foliage is like actually out there. It would be best if it was like right before it got to that point. But it's all right. There's still some time to do that as long as I do it like, well, right now. All this stuff over here, the honeysuckle. And then there's some brush honeysuckle and some other things coming up from the other side. So I'm going to get to work on that and it'll be right back. Oh, what a drastic improvement. 
garden transformations happening over here. Uh, no, well, I got all the honeysuckle cut up and then the brush honeysuckle from the back that was all over here and now it's down here and over there over here and cut that hydrangea back actually i think i need to get the top a little bit more because if that's bigger than the rest it's going to come out and shade the plant which would defeat the purpose of getting this cleaned and tidied so that the sun can get in there and the plant can grow uh, i do need to do something with this trellis here there's one issue i was going to just throw stakes in the ground and let that be the case for now and just have that do everything it needs to do but i did notice there's a drain pipe right here so i'm not sure where it's going to be safe to stake this down all the way so you can see this thing's really flimsy it was crazy cheap it's like 25 bucks off amazon i just got it because i wanted to test if i like the idea of having a trellis here or a archway arbor and uh, i do like it and uh, i would prefer to just build something i think that would make more sense but not you know can't really do that right now given the current situation, you know, not going to the hardware store and buying materials. So I was like, well, I'll just put some stakes in the ground and zip tie it to each end and then paint them black. If I have black paint, if not, then whatever. It's fine for right now. If there were any time for adaptability and some flexibility, then I think that this is it. So I'm just, you know, this is can work with this, but um, I'm not sure we need to get a hand trowel and kind of dig this area out and see what's going on down there. Okay, slight improvement. I, I did want to note, I think I called the weedy stuff over here, bush honeysuckle. That's not even what this is. The bush honeysuckle, you can identify. The only reason this matters is because it's an invasive. Bush honeysuckle will be hollow on the inside here, which this is not. I cannot remember what this stuff is, uh, but it's not bush honeysuckle. I have some bush honeysuckle in my front yard. Uh, this might just be one of the native honeysuckles. I know it's a honeysuckle because it gets the flowers on it in the springtime. Whatever the case, I don't, it's, it's too much for up here. So that's gone now. And I kind of just did my best sort of piecemealing this situation together. And I only had one of the big stakes. So I was like, we're just gonna make it work. Came in here, got as much of the honeysuckle that I wanted over here, cleaned up. It hid, it was originally planted over here, and it over time had sort of wandered this direction. You can see how it does that just from looking at this right here. So this was a spot on the wall where I had some calathea sitting last summer, and some soil spilled out of the pot, and there were drip heads. They're still over here, just they're like laying down. Drip heads, they were misters, so they're more micrometers than drip heads, but either way, kept this area nice and moist and see what happened there got a new plant going so I could actually take my clippers if I wanted to and cut this section right here and pot this up and then I'll have a new plant to work with which would be I mean that's fun right but not really necessary I think I'm good on this stuff for right now so I did like I said got this as tidy as I can for right now and then started working it up this trellis just a little bit but um <laughs> over here that's where the real challenge is do you see all the dead stuff on the inside there that's going to take me a while i'm gonna go and start working on it and just see what i feel like getting done the winds are picking up i think that that cold front plus the rain might be moving it wasn't supposed to come until tonight but i just looked at the radar and they're just wrong that happens whatever not the end of the world i'm gonna yeah start digging in here i would like to actually see vines growing across this for a change instead of just being like yeah we're gonna we're gonna just gonna fall over that way no, that kind of defeats the purpose of even having the trellis over here, right? <laughs> well, this side doesn't really quite match the other, but that's okay. I didn't want to cut the whole thing out. It's getting ready to bloom. and It's just, it's one of my favorite plants with the spring blooms. It's not there yet, but I just, I want to see the flowers. This was actually growing all the way over this wall and up into this bayberry here, which I was a little surprised by because I feel like I would have noticed that, but it's kind of laying down on the ground just below the side of this wall so that's i mean hey it's good enough it'll do for right now here's what happens with vines so i can explain what happened getting all the brush out from the inside is tricky because you kind of risk i kind of risk when i'm doing this cutting them from the base like it's hard to tell which end is which do you get what i'm saying so uh, i the first snip i made i went in there and i made a cut and I went oh no i forgot to track 
where that was going and it was going to this beautiful really long exquisite piece of vine that has lots of buds on it and I could have wrapped all the way across the top here and that's why I knew it as soon as I made the cut I went no slow it down moving too fast you're making mistakes so that's why I was like you know what just tap the brakes I'm gonna go ahead and let it bloom even if it just looks like a total hot mess that's fine. I want to see the flowers. So when it's done flowering, I will actually probably, since this one is just such a mess in there, I'll probably cut it from fairly, like, I don't know, I don't want to say high, like 50% up, see how much that loosens things up and just keep cutting until I have it untangled and until I can see all the, what, what's actually dead in there and then retrain it up here that they grow so fast once they're rooted down into the ground established I could really probably cut it all the way to the ground and it would recover this arch here no problem within like I don't know a month or two wouldn't be that big of a deal that's why with that little piece that's over here this guy that I was just showing everybody I don't really see a reason to pot that up and save it because this this stuff grows very um, aggressively don't see a reason for it though I do have some downspout trellises that might look good with this honeysuckle on them. I don't know. That's something to think about for another time. I'm just glad to have this done. I still need to clean up. There's just stuff everywhere. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it, but I, I'll just find a spot in the yard where I can start making a pile of all the lawn and yard debris, and that'll have to do for now. I need to straighten this guy up, too. Oh, I forgot. I need to top that off. Why, that's an, my hands are frozen. You might be wondering, why did I put the honeysuckle over here if it's so hard to control anyways? When I got this, the major wheeler had just come out. This is a long time ago it was being sold is only getting six to eight feet like it was some kind of magical dwarf honeysuckle and i was like that's cool i want that or maybe i was like maybe it's a bush i don't know the description just wasn't very good on it uh and then like a couple years later it's wayside gardens where i got it from i think it was wayside could have been parks i doubt it was parks they're mostly seeds anyways whole point a few years later that that changed in the descriptions went to oh no 20 to 30 feet and i was like yeah no i i noticed y'all definitely had that one wrong so that's why it's even over here, but I like it. It's my favorite honeysuckle. This whole area needs a complete makeover. This is sort of a step in that direction. I'd prefer to just build an arbor here. I'm not gonna go to the store and get wood to do that though. I mean, if there were an emergency, I need to like fix some plumbing or something. Sure, I'd go to the hardware store, but not to build an arbor. That doesn't make any sense, but eventually I'm gonna get rid of the bench here. And I was going to mulch this whole area, but I'm actually thinking like a dark rock, like lava or something might work better only because there's so much drainage that comes through here. I've told you guys before, these houses, they all wash down this way. And I think gravel would just be easier than having to keep top dressing with mulch every year because it's a big area from down here all the way over. That's a big chunk of land. I would rather just kind of throw some gravel in there. Do you still have to add to over the years? But I wouldn't have to do it as frequently as I would with mulch. Uh, and then maybe, you know, imagine this is more of a blank slate with the exception of this buckeye here. Put some shrubbery in the back, like some laurels and boxwoods, evergreens with some, I don't know, probably some sort of hydrangeas or something. I haven't put sunk that much thought into it. I mostly was just like, I need to handle the arch situation with the honeysuckle that's just sort of a step into that direction so that's what there, there's that whole update and why it was important to me to get that done i did come back not that it really makes a difference when things are this chaotic out here but i did get things cleaned up a little bit so while it still looks like a complete and total disaster it looks like a slightly tidier and uh, more janky actually less janky disaster and i'll take it it's fine look what i found okay here's a better example of that bush honeysuckle these plants are incredibly invasive i think that they're from like russia or something like that and i think i can give a better example here of how the growth is hollow there are other ways to identify it but that's a really good way see that so the older growth old wood is typically hollow newer growth isn't that's not going to be the case and they do get really pretty white flowers on them and beautiful red berries which is what they spread by the birds spread them around you can see the buds over here kind of on this one but the problem is that it just it absolutely takes over it chokes out the natives and it's just not a great thing to have around. There's two different types of bush honeysuckle. I don't know which this is. It doesn't really matter because it's got to go. I won't be using any herbicides, but I will at some point here get in here and really just cut that down as far as I can. And I will probably take a torch up close to it and 
burn that growth back and if you have to repeat that every year for like five years or so that's how aggressive this stuff is they clear big fields by just burning them out and you have to do it every single year even the fire they're like no no we're still gonna keep growing they're a tough plant if these were sterile if there was a way to sterilize them they would actually be a really cool landscape plant they hold their green longer in the fall than any of the other plants do and they're one of the first plants to flush out in the spring so you get longer seasons of interest with them and then they have those beautiful red berries and everything but it's just not a plant to have around when you see these you gotta get rid of them get them cut out because they will just absolutely take over i mean you can see look at it it's all the way down there and i've cut this back many years and burned it back and still despite that it's still I'm gonna it's like i'm tough i'm gonna grow this plant these are thug plants and they are really hard to get rid of oh wait here's some better <laughs> i should probably give you a little bit better way to identify these other than having to cut them out they have simple opposite leaves these will come out further than this nice glossy green on the top you can see the veining there on the inside and the undersides are a lighter more glaucous green and they're fuzzy so that's one of the ways to identify these if you have been wondering if it's a plant you want to get out and get rid of actually around here they have little roundups in the springtime where volunteers go out with the botanicals and other places and hit up the parks and people gather and help clear these things out because they're just they're taking over they're absolutely everywhere and they're really just not great because they spread really wide and then the ground stays bare underneath them it's just not great for the natives gotta get rid of these things Seriously, i just spent like maybe 10 seconds wiping down the glass and this sailfin tang's just like who are you you the devil go away shy come back out you want to say hi all right, that's fine. Get so shy when the camera comes around. Is there a pumpkin in here? Where's pumpkin? Two dogs, two cats, a house tortoise. Yet I am alone. Where are my pets? That doesn't matter. I just remembered that it's gonna get cold and I'm supposed to move some of the plants. You can't see what I'm doing. Plants gotta come in tonight. Not all of them, just a few. They moved it from 31 to 34, but look, like, I still don't really trust that because like there have been so many other times when they said it was going to be 37 and it dropped to 31 so it's kind of amazing that they're okay as it is so I'm just gonna kind of load the cart up here and push that in the garage just for one night it looks like it's going to warm back up after that I've got my fingers crossed hopefully it will I mean, uh, by <laughs> move them in what I meant was throw a frost cloth over them it's only supposed to be in the 30s for a few hours so this will be fine this should do the trick they're weighted down with pots and whatnot i put the hibiscus that was over there under here and i laid the banana down i don't think there's anything left out here that's really sensitive everything like the everything else out here can take it oh is that pumpkin pumpkin over here bite hi what you doing yeah hi sweetie i love you so much what you doing Okay, bye-bye, pumpkin. I was wondering where you were, pumpkin. You come out? Hey. hey. She's been doing something very unusual today. She's actually been sleeping. Usually this one's bouncing off the walls all day long. I mean, she was bouncing off the walls most of the morning. But you disappeared. Where's your new sleeping spot, pumpkin? I feel like I'm forgetting to do something really important. Important? Important? No. I can't remember what it is talking's getting harder and harder oh that's what you're looking at hey charlie charlie's butt charlie you don't make it into videos very often you always sleep and you want to say hi i'm sorry i didn't mean to disturb you while you're eating i'll leave you alone that's your friend right pumpkin she goes up to him every morning as long as he's up when she gets up and she runs up to him and he bows down because he's much taller than her and she just licks his face for like a solid minute and the entire time that she's doing it he has his ears curled back in his tail like he looks so unhappy and i'm like why are you it's real sweet what you guys are doing but he does it like he volunteers himself for it so he must enjoy it to some extent i'm going to try and sneak up on the fish anybody out anybody out okay some damsels are out tangs out where's where are the rest of the fish where are the other tangs everybody's hiding you don't look as mad that's good come on show everybody how pretty you are well that's fine uh this fish when i got it it was like i don't know roughly a year ago maybe 
it was missing scales on almost its entire left side and part of its right side. It had what's called lateral line disease. And that's something that isn't terribly uncommon for Tangs to get. They, uh, if he'll hold still, which he probably won't, he's excited for food now, or she, or non-binary, he can be whoever you want. But the fish, the Tangs, have what's called a lateral line. And uh, I, like I said, I can't really show it to you. It's like, a, it's a stripe sort of thing, runs along the side. And that lateral line is used to basically detect motion and whatnot in the water. That's like, I think the most dumbed down way to put it. But in Tang's, which is what he is, he's hiding now. I'll throw some food in here. All right, put some food in there and then kind of walked away with the camera. She just doesn't like the camera. So with Tang's, they get what's called lateral line disease. Other fish get it too, but it's most common in tangs. And it's usually due to like poor water quality, uh, malnutrition. They need a lot of fiber in their diet. And nature, they run around, they eat all the algae and macroalgaes and whatnot that's in the water. And it's really good for them. Oh, and um, free electric in the water can maybe be one of the causes too. There are a lot of debates where that's kind of like metabolic bone disease in reptiles. Where there's a lot of theories, but there's not necessarily one direct cause. Anyways... It's been about a year and it's almost completely cured for the most part. There's still a few spots on its head, which is where it typically starts. And, um, but otherwise it's pretty good. I've been making sure to feed it a diet of food. That's pretty much exclusively just food that contains like vegetable matter, mostly spirulina and seaweed, nori basically. And why not? Oh, there, where'd you go? Yeah. So that's that fun story. All the, most of the other fish are hiding. They just don't like the camera. I know the lighting's weird, but I think I've talked to you guys before that the lights I had up here broke, so I just threw a like an off-brand LED in the middle to kind of keep things going, which this leather coral didn't seem to appreciate, but it's fine. It's it is what it is. This isn't a time to be going out and buy new lights for the fish tank. They're extremely expensive. And I had them for like eleven years. So they did okay, but they're also like, um, here's they are right here, the Ecotech Radions. They're like 900 bucks a pop. So 11 years, not bad that I got out of them, but I needed three of them. So uh, yeah, that's not going to happen right now. And uh, there are other options now. At the time, the, these Ecotech Radions were pretty much the only way to go. Like that was like, they started things off with LEDs in the fish tanks. Yeah, there are other options now. There's, can you see it? To many tangs out. I've had that to many tang forever. That fish has been around. It's, it's a tough one, but uh, yeah, anyways, so that's why there's just light in the middle because I don't have my other light set up in there. I know that sounds like a lot of money for lighting because it is, but just like a comparison. Prior to that, I got this tank off Craigslist and it was the tank, a light fixture, a sump, which is down here, a custom made sump and an really nice plumbing too and some nice electrical things, but a very, very nice protein skimmer that I never used because it just seemed like overkill. It was like four and a half feet tall. Really nice setup. But um, the light fixture that came with this was a really great light fixture too. It held 16 36 inch bulbs, high output T5 bulbs. And those have to be replaced every 10 months. They take a couple weeks to break in when you put new bulbs in and then they slowly, like they peak and they start to fall apart. So there was this huge, huge light fixture up here, but 16 bulbs. High output T5 bulbs had to be replaced every 10 to, well, say 10 to 14 months. Um, that was a lot of money. The bulbs were about 25 to 35, sometimes $40 a piece, depending on where I was getting them from. So that's why I switched over to the LEDs. Yeah, a lot of money when you think about that, you know, $2,700 for all of those, but. So it was roughly like $560 before shipping and tax for those light bulbs about every 10 months. So. It, that just it made sense to switch over to the LEDs where I didn't have to change any bulbs for 11 years so after about four years of having the LEDs that pretty much covered what would have been cost the cost of changing those light bulbs out and then so there's a bonus well, seven eight years out of them so it, a lot of money but it is what it is but now like there are these off-brand ones like I have up here and there's some that aren't off-brand that are really nice that like that was pretty cheap I think it was like 125 and I actually think I like it better but the like wireless technology isn't as good. I can't do as much with it. The lights that were on here had all kinds of modes. You could set it to different places on the planet and what the light would be like at the right depths in the water and how they fade in and fade out. Ultimately, 
I don't know if I think that that's necessary. I'm staying too close to the water. They hate this camera. Been standing there this whole time just scaring the crap out of the fish. So that's the fish tank update nobody asked for. Uh, at some point, maybe I'll start bringing the camera in here with me when I feed and they'll get more used to it because they really do not like this thing. Yeah, okay, that was fun. I'm gonna go back outside, do some plant things. And here's what I was talking about, about using the water pressure to kind of move the leaves around a little bit. It's also useful for making sure to help not have dust and whatnot on the foliage, but it doesn't have to be done that often. But yeah, this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Basically like once a week when I'm watering for the past probably three weeks, I'm just making sure to go through and also get the foliage. Uh, that's not always a great thing to do. You want to make sure the temperatures are warm enough and you have a good enough airflow to dry them off because you don't want fungus and nasty things building up on your leaves. But so far, Things have been dry enough where they're not staying wet for too terribly long, so that hasn't really been an issue. Time for a poblano update. These poblanos have just been fantastic. I know in last week's video, last week's vlog, I had mentioned that I needed to go ahead and repot this because as you can see here, it's really, it's not holding itself upright anymore. It's just, there's, there's too much wonderfulness going on here. But that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to be planting these outside in probably a week and a half to two weeks. So why would I repot it? There's no reason to do that. I do think, though, that it's time to come in here and harvest. Some of these have gotten pretty big. You can see there's some red coming through on this one. So it is a little bit beyond ripe. Now, they're not as big as I would want a poblano to be, but that's OK. This is just their first set of fruit for the year anyways. And uh, uh, because produce is a little bit harder to come by since I'm not leaving the house. Right now I'm pretty much just going to be using these poblanos to feed to my pets that need fresh produce. I don't need this many of them though, so I'll probably hold on to a few of them. I like cut them up, roast them, put them in salads. But I'm pulling some of these off even though they're not ready to come off just because they're weighting the plant down and the plant it's in flower. So it's ready to go ahead and put on a whole new set of peppers here. Where are the flowers? Let's show the flowers. And, well, it had a lot of flowers on it till I picked it up and moved it. I think I knocked a few of them off. Yeah, look at all those poblanos. So much food there, even though they're not, some of them aren't quite ripe yet, but that's okay, especially if they're being fed to animals, like they're not going to care. But yeah, and you can also see how the plant was starting to grow in a really undesirable uh, form there because it was leaning and it's on its side. So that'll help it straighten back out. And then I can kind of give it some wiggles and whatnot to help sturdy it back up. And when I plant this, there's a possibility that, I mean, I'll probably be giving this a pretty good prune anyways to get it to root back out. I don't want it to be using its energy on fruiting when it needs to be establishing itself. So I'm not going to repot it. That just wouldn't make sense, right? Not if it's going to go outside and get planted in just a, like a week and a half. There's no, that would be too much. Repot it now and then have it go through that kind of shock and trauma and then in a week and a half go through it again doesn't make sense makes more sense to just cut these guys off of there so the plant can use its energy for its leaves and for its roots and uh get ready to go outside but yeah even the biggest ones on here are still they're still pretty hard not quite where i would want them yet and uh you know and these are for a poblano not very big they're bigger than i thought they would get being inside but uh, it'll do. It's fine. Like I said, I'm not going to be stuffing these or anything like that right now, so it's not that big of a deal. Hopefully when they get outside, though, they'll produce slightly larger peppers than this. Like, they don't have to be great big, huge, normal-sized poblanos, but that would be nice, right? I could pop one of these guys open and hold on to the seeds, but I don't know. That doesn't seem necessary. The one pepper plant has been so prolific, I don't think there's a reason to do that. No, I don't think so. I don't need to do that. So not the final poblano update, but got to finally do some stuff with it. And it was the poor thing. These poor begonias, it was leaning over so much. It was shading them, which now this amazel basil is doing to everything else in here. If it were like March or February, I would go ahead and probably give this amazel basil another like 50% cut. But I don't see a reason to when, like I said, same with the poblano, it's going to be outside in just like a week or two. I'm, that garden tour video that came out prior to this one, that was just filmed three days before this video. So if you've seen that, you can tell there's a good amount of growth between those two dates. So actually, I probably should 
come in here and give it a little bit of a prune. <laughs> it's like, it's actually, it's up in the light fixture. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and top that off. Yeah, I'll do that when I'm done talking to y'all. I'll go ahead and just give it a little bit of a top, but it's really gonna need a bigger cutback. I'll get to it, don't worry about it, it's fine. Oh, it's so exciting, all these months with this pepper plant growing, finally getting to cut them off, even if they are like wonkily ripe and unripe, that's okay. Like I said, I'm just happy to have them off of there. What a difference using the wicking cord made for that plant. If you remember back in like, I don't know, February, January, whenever that was that I was talking about with the poblanos, how I was having to water them like pretty much every single day, if not every other day, because they would just wilt. Like as soon as that soil would dry out, they would just wilt. And I intentionally planted them in a mix that would dry very quickly because I wasn't sure how warm things would be in here this winter. I didn't know how bad the winter would be. Even with the heaters and everything, it's still a garage, even though it's insulated. If it's, you know, five degrees outside, then it's probably only gonna be in the upper 40s to 50s in here. Luckily, that didn't happen very often. Actually, that didn't happen at all. It, I don't think it ever dropped below 60 in here. I'm pretty sure it didn't. If it did, it was because the door got left open for too long. Stayed pretty toasty, mostly in the upper 70s to mid 80s. So that made the pepper more thirsty. But what I was saying is that if it weren't a really moisture retentive potting mix and the temperatures were cooler, then the plant would have just rotted away. So I erred on the side of being safe there with better drainage for everything. Hey fish, how y'all doing? But then I put that wicking cord in there. I have not watered that plant not one time since I put that wicking cord on there. It has just been growing and growing and growing. Same thing with the basil. They've been doing fantastic. Y'all, they want food. I want food. It's getting kind of late. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to wrap it up here. There are a few other things that I thought about doing, but I'm trying to maintain my voice a little bit. When the pollen gets high outside, my voice gets really hoarse. And it's, it's so if I sound like something's wrong when I'm talking in these videos, I may have earlier, that was just me trying to conserve my voice. I don't want a sore throat right now. It's not great to have anything going on that's a symptom of what's going on. So I'm trying to just be extra careful to preserve that. And uh, so, yeah, and there's really, it's the waiting game. I'll be able to move the plants out, not all of them, but I think I'll be able to start rolling them out here in a few days, which is right after this vlog comes out. So that'll be a next week's vlog. Like I said, it won't be everything, but it'll be a good amount of things. And then I have like lots of caladiums and cannas and things that I need to start potting up, but I need to move things out to make room for the, it's a whole thing. You'll see when I get to it, what I'm talking. Do you don't want to No, There we go. Now there's a nice shot of a plant after I'm done doing the talking. But anyways, so what's everybody been up to for new shows? Getting things done at home. I got my washing machine cleaned. That was good. I've, that's been like one of those things where it's been bugging me every day for like three days. And I was like, you got to do this because I, I need to do laundry. So happy to have that done. I think next I need to start pulling some tension up on this tie see how it's just the whole it's just bleh, falling over but that steak isn't strong enough i tried earlier like a few days ago i tried to give it a pull and the steak just goes with it so i may just have to wait till it goes outside my poor little vandas they got so thirsty because when the water level drops in here when i water heavily i i can't really soak them as well and i was like it's okay i'll give it a few days water will just be that much more oxygen oxygen be that much more oxygen rich without there being as much in it but i totally it didn't equip the it was like oh but i can't water the but that's not a problem anymore they've gotten a soak they'll be okay i do want to take a moment to say thank you everybody has been so kind down in the comments well not everybody the majority of people have just been so nice and it, that's such a nice feeling to get on and see that people are you know still having some positivity in them and some friendliness thank you to all of the the majority of people who've been so lovely here and on instagram and everywhere that's a contagious thing we all need to put that out there as much as possible and it's going to get harder obviously to do that as time goes on so it's going to be one of those things where i think that as a society uh, by society i just mean humans because this is a global situation we're going through to be on top of reminding ourselves to try and spread some love back and forth because the negativity doesn't help anyone yeah so again thank you for the manyth time there i appreciate y'all uh, i know this is a time of struggle this is a rough time for people who already have high levels of anxiety and depression or maybe you're struggling with addiction and i won't go too far into it i don't want to be triggering to people there are hotlines and places to call if you need to talk 
that's important. Don't be ashamed. There's no reason to be. Now, I hope everybody's doing well as well as possible. I came in here and gave this a little bit of a cutback. Look at how much of that I missed. I was just like a tornado moving through here. I missed everything. The new growth is coming. It's neither here nor there. Everybody's doing well. Look at all the pink over here. It's making me very happy. These anthuriums, anthuriums have been doing so well. They do so well in here. What's going on? It's time to go. Hope everybody's doing as well as possible. Staying home. Staying healthy, staying safe, staying strong. But if you have a moment of weakness, that's okay. We're all human. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Not everything's fine. I mean that it's fine. That's what I meant to say. Uh, the YouTube stuff down there helps the channel a lot. I do appreciate it. And I'm so excited about next week, really just a few days from now, to start moving some stuff outside and making more room in here to get the bulbs and things going. I don't see it. They don't really start doing anything until it gets hot, so I don't see a reason to start my caladiums in, like, February, whereas if I start them outside, they'll sprout within a week versus waiting three weeks to a month inside and then having the risk of rot during that time they're not as likely to do that outside whole nother thing again still talking okay of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye